Hello gorgeous, I'm the Fairy Voice Mother and today I'm going to be reacting to Je suis malade by Lara Fabian. Lara Fabian? I'm not sure. Excuse my French. Civvy play. I've been asked to listen to this quite a few times now, but this morning I woke up with symptoms. I have a small cough, mucus, my eyes are mildly aching, so don't kiss me. Or kiss me at your peril. Je suis malade. Therefore, I thought, what better time than now to, to listen to this? Maybe it's gonna hit different. I don't know what kind of sickness it is that she will depict. I have a feeling it's a little bit more poignant and poetic than mucus. But we'll see anyway. Oh yeah, apparently Dimash is big into this lady as well. And if it's good enough for Dimash, <laughs> we are probably in for a treat, are we not? Right. Jesus wept! I mean, those lyrics are... <laughs> wow! I'm glad she's not smoking anymore. Surely that's a good thing. You know, so in that case, I mean, good riddance. The technique she uses for the word le, which means ugly, how she fries that. Je suis le sans toi. Very effective use so far of what we call word painting, which is where you reflect the meaning of the word with the vocal performance. A classic example of this is like a downwards melisma on the word falling. I'm falling. You hear that all the time. Je suis sale sans toi. Sale. Same on the word dirty. Comme une Bloody hell. Very effective use of breath. She's struggling for breath. And obviously breath is um, essential for life and she's, she's struggling for that. So I think that's uh, significant. You can't actually hear where her voice transitioned from uh, thick to thin, but you know she did because this was strong and this was thin. But where did it break? So how this works anatomically is there are two main muscles that control the thickness and length of the vocal cords. You've got a muscle called your TA, which keeps them short, and a CT, which keeps them long, right? And they are what we call an antagonistic muscle pairing, just like the bicep and the tricep. A sudden tr transition between the thick muscle and the thin muscle is ooh, right? But what she can do is use those muscles expertly together so it's like a blend, it's like a gradual passing the baton. This is actually a very complex vocal process as well. The dare wasn't fully thick like the mala. It was still controlled. So just because the notes are high or low, that doesn't mean she should be singing them thick, thin or mixed. She's choosing and changing the vocal cord thickness depending on what's right for the meaning. Like for example now, malad is much thicker than malad when she did it before, but it was the same notes. Even if the melodies come back, she's already starting to build the performance, which tells me she's gonna build it even more uh, throughout the rest of the performance as well. Parfaitement, malade. Parfaitement, I love that. Fab 
fabulous use of the sounds that naturally occur in this language. She's amplifying the h in parfaitement to convey this kind of frustration with being perfectly sick. Help us on its way. Now that she's talking about alcohol consumption, there's a roughness and a harshness to the vocal delivery. She's basically doing a monologue in tune. They're all happy, but I drink every night! Whiskey! This is absolute perfection. She's unable to convey that level of intensity in the emotion and the dramatic performance while still maintaining perfect pitches. What a queen. That malad had an extra layer of emotion in it, didn't it? And I think that is because there is a slight presence of a little bit of glottal action there at the beginning of the malad, and it's helping her kind of ease in, so it kind of sounds like she's crying. And then moved it into this like what we call cry position where the larynx is nice and tilty, like so she's using this position as well as that that kind of build up behind the lips, that pressure to actually make it sound like she's crying the note. But then what makes it so exquisite is the fact that it isn't like it isn't like an ugly cry. It's just enough of that sort of crying vibe, but still maintaining the beautiful control. She's leaning into every one of those vowels. Lovely contrast between when she simply said, I am sick. So, I am sick. Completely sick. You know, it gives it a nice sort of emphasis. Not only have we got that sinister face, which is reflecting a kind of sinister vocal sound, but just in case you were not sure of the method of death here, we've got a very helpful hand gesture. How very illustrative of you, Lara. Thank you. She sits on top of every single note that she sings. It's so stable. Everything is down there. Her shoulders are square, she's rooted into the ground and her head is perfectly level and not moving even the tiniest bit up to ensure that every single one of those notes sound balanced and open. The minute we do any kind of contraction up here, we can lose a little bit of that stability. Now obviously there are exceptions to that rule, like if you're doing a bit of a falsetto kind of a... Bit of this. But when you want to create something very strong and smooth like this, yeah. I'm getting a lot of Celine Dion vibes. The vowels that she's using are so close to the ones that Celine Dion uses, and Celine Dion is also an excellent controller of her mixed voice. <laughs> You can hear 
hear the weight that that physical movement has added onto the sound. That was wild. She's lent into that burp plosive sound. You can see that your lips kind of get in the way so you can add all your breath and then it comes out into your cheeks and bah! That enables everything to stay open for some flappy, distorted goodness within. so many chills I didn't even know I could have this amount of chills it hurts Ugh, they're still there through my arms through my neck we don't all cut about mixing F sharps like that we don't that was unbelievable it kind of just fell out I could listen to that all day that is like the vocal equivalent of a chocolate mousse <laughs> I don't even know what that means sometimes when we think of sustaining a note We can run the risk of imagining that note as static. It's just ah! Then what happens is potentially a little bit of constriction. Because if you imagine the note's not going there, then potentially it's really just not gonna go anywhere and then it's gonna turn into a disaster. I think it's important to imagine that the note is moving. Because it is. Of course the vocal cords are keeping a nice regulated oscillation speed, which is why you can sustain the note because the vocal cords are continuing their lovely flappiness. Um, at a consistent speed. So a couple of techniques I advise singers to use when they have to sustain a note is a movement in the arms, because while the arm's moving, you can keep imagining your notes moving. Another thing I advise is to vary your mouth position slightly to further encourage the body that this note is actually moving and it's not still, Jesus. I'm actually sweating. This should come with a disclaimer. Do not watch without somewhat of a sunny disposition. <sighs> At least it's a sweet contradiction because she's saying that, you know, you, you stole all of my, my talent and my singing and I'm a dead bird. But obviously she can still very much sing. Now, she definitely must be some kind of native speaker of French just because of how she honours the sounds that French provides to convey emotion. The ooh vowels and the false chord stuff. Thank you so much for watching this video with me today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. If there are any singers you would like to see me react to, please do let me know in the comments as it is always my pleasure. I love you so much. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you again next time. Bye.